As I'm heading to the lake, thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I hope she hasn't gone in the water. And as I look into the water, I see her. There are these uh, very muscular, very powerful living personas. I'm clearly being hunted. And all of a sudden, I felt a really strange presence around me. I'm feeling my entire mouth with all of my teeth being ground down by some strange presence. I'm focused on their hands and their mouths just eating this flesh and knowing what it is and not able to like scream at them like, do you know what you're doing? Dreams and nightmares, the subconscious way of sending a message. With the right tools, it is possible to decipher these symbols. I'm Lauren Lawrence, and I have these tools. I've been decoding celebrity dreams for over a decade. Nightmares expose the truth, whether you want to know it or not. nightmare was 21 years ago. It's without question the worst nightmare I've ever had. It was a time when I was creatively going to a place to play a particular character that was very dark. I believe I had the dream because the creative forces of the universe wanted me to eventually be so impacted that I had to tell the story of the dream. So what is my nightmare could be somebody else's blessing. Stephen, I'd love to hear your nightmare. I'm in uh, the home of a relative of mine, and I'm sleeping like in the downstairs living room. I see myself sleeping on the couch. So it was almost as if I was someone else watching myself. And I remember seeing myself wake up. From the moment I woke up, I, I knew that I was looking for something, and I realize rather quickly that I'm looking for the daughter of this relative. So I look around that room behind the couch. The longer it's taking for me to find her, the more worry I become that maybe something's wrong. Uh, I became progressively more and more frightened. There was some instinct that led me out of the house. It was nighttime, a full moon, as I'm walking out the back door onto a patio, onto the yard, that grass would then end and become like the shoreline of the sand that leads to the lake. And as I'm heading to the lake, thinking to myself, um, I wonder where she could be. There's a, there's a part of my sensibility that says, oh my goodness, I hope, hope she hasn't gone in the water. And as I get to the water's edge, I immediately just lean out and look over. And as I look into the water, I see her. There was almost a peace about her. And it was almost like she was waiting for me to find her. There was almost a ghost-like quality to the image that I saw. The moment I saw her and she saw me, uh, I saw like the last few wisps of like air bubbles come out of her nostrils. And then she just closed her eyes and then very slowly started to fade away. When I woke up from the dream, I was hysterical. 
It was the most emotional I've ever been in my life. For at least an hour, I laid on the floor, curled up, kind of just bawling from the whole experience. Wow, that is a scary nightmare. Very interesting dream. So Stephen, now I'm going to break down your dream symbol by symbol and let you know what each symbol means. The interesting thing uh, about this dream is that it starts out and you realize you're missing something. That means that you're on some kind of a quest. When you awaken in a dream, it means that you have the wish to awaken in the fullest sense. So it's really like a spiritual awakening. The water is a birth symbol. It also has to do with rescue and rescue fantasies. Because it's below you, it also represents the unconscious. So on some level, you are trying to get below the surface of things to understand what is going on in your own unconscious. Now, a death in dreams is not a physical death. It's usually a spiritual or religious death or an end of a lifestyle, an end of a relationship, work, whatever. Do you want to know what this dream means? Very much so, okay. yes, absolutely. OK. okay. Your nightmare is predicting down the line that you need to be reborn. Very interesting. And so on some level, uh, this, this child that you see is you. Now, the gender means nothing. Right. You could be anyone in a dream. Uh, in fact, many times the dream uses disguise. And in order to be reborn, the old self has to die. What did you change? Did you change anything in your life? I was playing that character in the film. Mm -hmm. And at the time, in exploring the character, I was radically abusing alcohol and really kind of living yeah. the character or doing what I thought I needed to to live or have a certain experience to play this role. It wasn't too long after this experience that uh, uh, I got sober. I'm 45 years old now, and I haven't had any drugs or alcohol since I was 23. Congratulations. It shows that you are tapping into your unconscious, and your unconscious is telling you that there needs to be some death of the old self. Mm. And so the fact that you become sober after the dream shows that you, you took heed of your dream, which is, mm -hmm. which is great. And then... Um, completely uh, confirming everything you're saying is uh, the fact that 10 years ago, I literally became a born-again Christian. Mm. So it's interesting that you remember it because it was a turning point for you. Oh, absolutely. And I like the way you said um, you were watching yourself in the dream. You know, you were seeing yourself, and you were seeing yourself lying in the bed and, and awakening. In other words, what you were doing there was stepping outside of yourself. And often, to know the self, we have to leave the self. Incredible. There's a coming full circle for me that is the interpretation of this nightmare. It was almost a foreshadowing of what would be. And I never knew that that foreshadowing was about myself. So that's awesome. Many great authors have claimed that their stories have been inspired by their dreams. But one author's dream became more than an amazing story. It was a dire prediction of the future. Based on his disturbing dream, Morgan Robertson published The Wreck of the Titan in 1898. The book was about an unsinkable ship that sank while carrying 3,000 of the elite people of the time. It made its ill-fated voyage in April and was sunk by an iceberg that hit its starboard side. Fourteen years later, the Titanic sank in circumstances eerily similar to the details in Robertson's book. I first had this nightmare about three years ago at a very difficult period in my life when I got separated.
The nightmare has recurred every few months. There are specific parts of it that wake me up in the middle of the night in sheer terror sometimes. So it would be very interesting to find out exactly what it means. So Beth, I'd like you to begin by telling me the nightmare that's been plaguing you. My nightmare begins in a restaurant. I was out to dinner with my two best friends. We're at a nice table. There's lots of people. I was eating, drinking, having fun. And all of a sudden, I felt a really strange presence around me. Kind of like you feel a, a shiver up your spine, like something is severely wrong. I'm scared, I'm looking for the waiter, and immediately I can't get my words. I, I can't talk, nothing will come out. I'm, I'm completely paralyzed, my vocal cords and my body. And the next thing I knew, I was laying flat on a table. I'm seeing blue eyes all around me. So I look around and I, I see wolves. I just remember feeling, you know, intense fear. And the next thing I knew, I'm feeling my entire mouth with all of my teeth being ground down by some strange presence. I can't see who it is, but I'm, I'm feeling scared. This strange presence was still holding me down. And the wolves are looking at me, they're talking amongst themselves, but I can't hear what they're saying. I want to get out of there. The presence is trying to keep me down. I see a really long hallway. So I, I get myself up. I'm going straight down the hallway, but I keep turning to the right and the left, and I'm looking for doors. There's no way out. But I'm, I'm running and running and running, and, and at that point, you know, I start floating. next thing I know, uh, I'm in the middle of New York. And I'm floating and I'm looking down. I start falling. And I catch on, I grab onto a tree limb. The tree was really as high up as a, a skyscraper. It's getting me nowhere near the ground. And at that point, I wake up in, in sheer terror. That's a very vivid nightmare filled with evocative symbols. So, Beth, now I'm going to decode the symbols of your dream one by one. When you dream of eating in a restaurant with your friends, it reveals the wish to be emotionally nourished on some level. If you're not getting the attention that you deserve, the recognition, you may dream of eating because you're giving yourself that nourishment that you're not getting, which means the attention. Now, when you have the grinding of the teeth, <laughs> I have to ask you, because you may not even know, but do you grind your teeth? I grind my teeth. <laughs> you, the awareness of your grinding the teeth is leaking into your dream. Also, the clenching of the teeth and the grinding, that means you're, you know, it shows anger, you know, and you want to hold something in. The wolf symbol, in general, refers to men. It's a predator symbol, and it means that you're being hounded. Yeah, they were talking. Yeah. So on some level, it could represent someone around you who you don't like, you don't feel comfortable with, you're being chased by them. You know, it's a threatening situation. Rooms define the dreamer. 
And the fact that you are not in any room, that you're going from one hallway to another hallway to another hallway, does show resistance in defining yourself and the situation you're in. The floating symbol and the flying symbol are, again, symbols of trying to raise yourself from a situation and also to leave the dream. The falling symbol is a symbol of giving up control. It's the wish to lose control, to just relax. And that would be going back to sleep. So there is a conflict. Part of you wants to leave the dream, and the other part wants to preserve sleep, because sleep is very important. The symbol in the nightmare of you reaching out for a tree limb represents the wish for support. So um, in a nightmare, if you are reaching out for a limb or clutching onto a, any part of a tree, it means that you're looking for something similar to a helping hand. Dream research has shown that we don't actually need to be asleep to dream. If we are relaxed enough to turn off the switch of self-awareness, it is possible to be awake while dreaming. I was eating, drinking, having fun. All of a sudden, I felt a really strange presence. I'm feeling my entire mouth with all of my teeth being ground down by some strange presence. There's no way out. I start falling. And I catch on, I grab onto a tree limb. And at that point, I wake up in, in sheer terror. Are you ready to learn what your nightmare means? Yes. What's interesting about this dream is that um, it kind of reflects what you do in life. Because in life, as a poker player, um, which I've heard you're incredible, um, you have to really keep your emotions in and not let anyone see what, your hand, literally. I can't really show emotion and I have to, you know, keep my feelings inside. And You want control. You don't want to give too much away. So sleep would be a place where you could relax and let things sort of happen to you. When you lay down and you try and go to sleep, you have to really let go and, you know, pretty much be at peace and, you know, that's hard to do to begin with, let alone, you know, recently for me. When the dream starts and you're in a restaurant, um, do you have any associations with that, with your friends? When the dream starts in a restaurant, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm with, you know, my two best friends and I'm, I'm feeling safe. That's the right. only part that I'm feeling right. okay. So on some level, there is the wish to be nourished. You're around friends. And I think that instead of going forth with more of the dream, that's when something clicks that you want to get out of the dream. And that's when all these other symbols occur. They're not being able to move. They're not being, a being able to speak. That's the scariest part. Yeah. You know, I was trying to talk. I was trying. That's when I woke myself up this morning. Yes, we see that again. It shows the real strong desire to break into consciousness, to avoid the unconscious. So maybe there's something you don't want to deal with there, something repressed, and that might be fearful. That makes sense. Because this nightmare occurred, just at the time you were separating. The fact that you, that you are separating is very traumatic, it's very stressful, and the dream could be your attempt to maintain control during this very frightening, stressful situation. So by trying to awaken, you're gaining control. By letting go, you're losing control, and that would not be good at a time when you're under such pressure from your romantic relationship. At least I know why I can't sleep now. Once people understand something um, intellectually, then they need to get it emotionally. And once the two wed, then it's okay.
So once you internalize that, I think you'll be able to sleep freely. I thought Lauren's interpretation was amazing. You know, the separation, the anxiety, the, the, the anger, you know, they, of course, they made, they made a lot of sense. <laughs> they made a lot of sense. I'm hoping now that I'm going to start getting a few good nights sleep. <laughs> The dream took place not long ago. Anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. It's very vivid. So, Lark, I'd love to hear about the nightmare that has been perplexing you. The nightmare begins. Jurassic Ravine, all by myself, there are mountains. And the landscape is very, it's very Jurassic. It's untouched, basically. Suddenly, in the midst of enjoying these natural elements, I sense this charge of aggression. There are these uh, very muscular, very powerful living personas. I'm clearly being hunted. I happen to notice water, running water, a stream of it. I follow the stream of water to this singular tunnel. There's this uh, strong, powerfully natural pull to go in. I see one point of light at the end of the tunnel. Since the danger, my decision was to reach and access the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm almost basically floating. My sense of reality is shifting in and out, and I'm really having to focus to not be pulled somewhere that I don't want to be. I reach the light. I reach the light. Upon arrival, you notice a door. It does not open. I literally transfer from one side of the door to the other. There was a, a sense of a relief. I met people on the other side of the door. I did not feel a sense of fear of them. And the people on the other side were very sunshiny, friendly, 70s looking folk. They're there waiting in a Scooby Doo looking van. I jumped in the van. There was some sort of AK 47 automatic machine. I aimed my weapon out the door. And we simply sped off on a dirt road. It's a very um, powerful philosophical dream. Many people complain that they forget their dreams when they wake up. To remember more of your dreams, lie still upon awakening. Keep a dream diary by your bedside and record every detail of your dream. And most importantly, make sure you get a full night's rest. The more hours you sleep, the more chances you have to dream. Suddenly, I'm, I sense this charge of aggression. I'm clearly being hunted. I see one point of light at the end of the tunnel. I aimed my weapon out the door. And we simply sped off on a dirt road. It's a very um, powerful 
philosophical nightmare. Lark, I'm now going to decode your nightmare symbol by symbol. A valley is a symbol of depression. It's sunken, and when you said that there were mountains surrounding you, so you are surrounding yourself, even though you yourself are in some kind of depression, you are surrounding yourself by the heights, hoping, aspiring to reach the heights in some way. Water is a symbol of birth, of rebirth, of life. So to have water in front of you means there's birth and rebirth in you and cleansing in your future. The tunnel is often a symbol of the unconscious because it is beneath ground and it's usually dark. Going into a tunnel uh, reveals the wish to learn more about one's unconscious self. The symbol of the darkness represents our inner demons, so to walk away from that is very good. It shows that you want to walk toward the light, and the light stands for purity, and so you're walking in the right direction, and that's a forward. It's a strong pull and a collective decision to move forward. The next symbol of the going through the door, uh, almost passing through it like an entity or a spirit, it really reveals the wish for transformation, to be so light that you can just pass through solid objects. Guns in general, as a symbol in dreams, are a phallic symbol. It is also a symbol of masculinity and of power. It depends on how the gun is used and who is using it and in what context the gun comes into play. Lark, this is what your nightmare means. It is a spiritual dream of self-discovery. You begin in a natural setting, uh, very pristine, countrified, and then you go from the natural setting, from nature, to something man-made, the tunnel. So from that symbol, I could see that you have some obstacles to overcome in order to get to the light or the spiritual world. Very true because you know that a nightmare is a more important dream than a regular dream. The nightmare means that you are working on something traumatic that is coming to fruition in your life at the moment of the dream. So a nightmare will purposely create a scary, troubling, anxiety-provoking scenario. You need to remember these dreams so that you can work through them when you wake up. Vastly so it means that you are on the right track. So this is a very powerful ending that your nightmare has because you're able to move through the light and then acquire the gun, the weapon, and through the acquiring of the gun, you become empowered. This is what empowers you. Interesting. So you associate light with power. The dream is a reminder that you have the wherewithal to make the right decision. Awesome. It was quite fulfilling. The interpretation at all helped me to realize that I certainly have um, a natural instinct for achievement. It certainly did indicate a need to have hope. So that's a very good element and sign. Very good sign all around for me. I'm pleased. I have been having a nightmare, probably. I'm gonna gauge between six and nine years old. It started. It seems to reoccur for me anytime I'm feeling anxiety or fear. But I think because I was so young and what the nightmare was about was so bad that it's now constantly in my subconscious, just waiting to come back. Adrian, why don't you tell me your traumatic nightmare?
My nightmare begins at my childhood home. There's a barbecue that's supposed to be happening at my neighbor's house, and my family's getting ready for it. I'm getting ready for it. I look outside, I can see them like erecting the picnic tables, and everyone's accounted for, except for my father. I immediately start looking for my dad. And the more I look for him, the more helpless I feel, the more weighted down I feel. It almost always feels like I have lead in my hands and my feet. It's very hard to move. I feel like I'm making a conscious effort just to lift a finger. My anxiety just keeps building about my father. Where is dad? Why can't I find dad? Why isn't dad here? At some point, I realize my father's not in the house, and I, I go outside. I just know something's not right. So I walk across my mother and father's driveway to the neighbor's house, and there's a basement window. And there's thick glass, like it's about this thick. And they're opaque, you can't see through them. And I hear, I hear what sounds like a fight. I can swear I hear my father's voice. And I know that I have to help him. I want to punch out this window, I want to kick at it. But every swipe, every punch I throw, it feels like I'm literally just doing that. I'm, I'm going nowhere with this. And then the noise stops. The barbecue starts. I follow my mother and my grandmother, who ask me what's wrong. And I can never tell them what's wrong. I can never tell them, dad's missing, can't find dad, thinks something happened to dad. They're serving ribs and they're delicious, and everyone's ranting and raving about how amazingly delicious these ribs are. But I make my way to the other side of the grill, in which I see a torso. And I just, it's, it's like a sickening feeling. The torso inside the barbecue is limbless and headless. It's almost like cartoonish. Like, you know what it is. Like a mannequin in a store. And then I realize that we're all eating my father. After I discover, you know, everyone's been munching on dear old dad, I'm focused on their hands and their mouths just eating this flesh and knowing what it is and not able to like scream at them like, do you know what you're doing? And it's like lead feet again. And I remember waking up from it and you know how you wake up in a cold sweat. But mine, every time I have this dream, it's beyond a cold sweat. I'm soaking wet, sweat, no, sweat dripping. I have to change the sheets. Wow. <laughs> That's, That's my dream. a very, very frightening dream. You're sitting at a desk, about to take a test, and you realize you haven't studied. What is the meaning behind this common nightmare? Dreaming about being unprepared to take a test reveals that you worry about being unprepared in your life. Interestingly, these nightmares are dreamt by perfectionists who want to make sure they will never be unprepared. The subconscious is making sure that all the necessary prep work has already been done. I immediately start looking for my dad. I hear what sounds like a fight. And I know that I have to help them. They're serving ribs. And then I realize that we're all eating my father. Wow. 
<laughs> that's that's a very, very frightening dream. It is. Now I'm going to go through the symbols of your nightmare and decode them one by one. Mm -hmm. The first symbol is the missing father, because you said you're always looking for him and he's not there. Was he a distant father to you? Both my parents worked a lot. They're factory workers, so 12-hour shifts. He'd come home and be pretty tired. But um, when I was 12 or 13, there was a big disconnect between he and I until I turned about 20. Mm -hmm. We started coming back together. When the father is missing, it shows that he's missing from your life. OK. <laughs> the barbecue symbol um, has um, a separate symbol of fire attached to it. Fire represents the emotions, and particularly angry emotions and passions. The basement symbol usually represents the unconscious because it is beneath, although sometimes it can have a sexual connotation. When one is unable to run, almost feeling paralyzed or heavy, or you know, that you just sort of can't move, that represents indecision on the one hand and conflict. So often when people feel paralyzed, in dreams, it means that they don't really want to act at that moment. So Adrian, are you ready for me to tell you the meaning of your recurring traumatic nightmare? I am. It's been a very long time. I think it's time that I know what this is about. So this is a traumatic anxiety dream, and traumatic anxiety dreams always recur because there's so much stimulus and trauma to the system that with each recurrence, the wish of the dream is to distill it, to weaken it. So it will never be as petrifying as the original. I have to ask you, uh, in your past, because there are such grotesque images there, um, was there any abuse? Um. I was molested when I was five years old by an older man. Did this dream occur after the molestation? Yes. Because there's, there's just too much grotesque imagery. For a kid. Yes, yeah. for a kid. When you are down in the basement, and you said you hear an altercation in the basement, an altercation in the basement usually refers to some kind of sexual attack or it was against your will. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense oh, to yeah. you? <laughs> yes. The image of seeing your father cooking could represent your anger at your father for not being there for you. Also, the fact that you were molested and he did not protect you, that's another sense of abandonment. And in a way, your dream is trying to resolve that and almost get even. There's a little bit of retribution in this because it is your dream, and you're dreaming something so horrific. Your dream also tells you to really react to the anger you're feeling and never let yourself feel victimized. Because that did happen to you, and that's so important to deal with. OK. I, I, can, I can see that. It's so funny. I never even thought of it in that way. I always thought it was like, you know, maybe some daddy issues with daddy's not around, but the whole maybe a subconscious, like, you weren't there for me thing, mm -hmm. that really resonates for me, Absolutely. so. This dream reoccurs because there was so much trauma and so much that you wanted to get out and work through that there are certain things that you didn't get. You know, you either repressed or you just didn't want to think about it. Now that we've discussed it, it should not recur. So you think my nightmare is over? This one. <laughs> this one. This one. It's very eye-opening. And I feel a little bit at peace with it because it's something That's good. that has always bothered me. Because it, I mean, the visuals, mm -hmm. I remember thinking, like, something's really wrong with me to be a little girl that dreamt mm -hmm. of that. Well, thank you very much. And I really, really hope that uh, it goes away. I'm going to definitely work on it. 
Lauren pretty much blew me away. Uh, she pointed out a lot of things about my dream that I hadn't tapped into. Um, I knew it was surrounding some daddy issues. I had no idea it was so closely tied to past traumas in my life. Uh, that was a real eye-opener for me. Um, her telling me that now that I understand my dream, that the likelihood of it happening again is next to nil, basically makes my day. <laughs> I would prefer to never have to eat my father again in a nightmare. 